Take your time. Take your time. Because if you are lying, it's the most cold-blooded thing that I have ever faced in my life. Povestea de astăzi ne duce în Markham, Canada, unde vom afla povestea lui Jennifer Pan. Știți acei copii care sunt ținuți din scurt, iar în perioada adolescenței se întorc împotriva părinților, făcând exact lucrurile care le fusese reinterzise anterior? Ei bine, acesta este și cazul fetei de astăzi. Viața lui Jennifer Pan a fost controlată în totalitate de părinții ei, aceștia fiind singurii care luau decizii de forma ce să facă, unde să meargă, cu cine să-și petreacă timpul și așa mai departe. Asta până la vârsta de 15 ani, când Jennifer a început încetul cu încetul să se îndepărteze de părinții ei. Jennifer a fost o elevă de 10 pe linie, crescută de familia ei, refugiată din Vietnam. Aceasta făcea patinaj de la vârsta de 8 ani și trebuia să participe la Olimpiada de Iarnă din 2018, însă o accidentare a făcut-o pe Jennifer să renunțe la acest sport. Comportamentul strict al părinților provenea din dorința lor de a oferi copilului tot ce considerau ei că este mai bun. Traiul familiei era unul foarte bun, aceștia aveau două mașini, o casă mare și o sumă frumoasă de bani în conturile de economii. Își doreau ca și fica lor să ducă o viață mai bună, așa că au adoptat un stil dur atunci când venea vorba de educația ei. Jennifer nu avea voie să meargă la petreceri, dar era forțată să învețe pian, patinaj și arte marțiale. Absolvise liceul și tocmai ce avea să devină doctor după ce termina universitatea din Toronto. Asta era doar pe hârtie. Hârtie pe care Jennifer o făcea. Nu înțelegeți? Jennifer își falsifica rapoartele școlare, carnetul de note și diplomele încă din clasa 12 Aceasta nici măcar nu-și terminase liceul. De facultate nici nu mai menționez. Când părinții știau că este la școală, aceasta mergea la iubitul ei secret, Daniel Wong. Când l-a întâlnit pe Daniel? Exact în momentul în care a început să-și falsifice carnetul de note. De la vârsta de 17 ani, aceasta a pus în practică vorba zica ei și făca tine. Atunci când Jennifer le-a spus părinților că a fost acceptată la Universitatea Ryerson, aceștia au cumpărat un laptop. Când aceasta a terminat facultatea, le-a spus părinților că nu pot participa la festivitatea de premiere, întrucât oferise invitația ei unei alte colege care dorea neapărat ca ambii părinți să fie prezenți la ceremonie. Când părinții au aflat de Daniel, aceștia au confiscat laptopul și telefonul și bineînțeles că i-au interzis să se mai vadă cu el. Atunci Jennifer a primit un ultimatum. Avea de ales între 1. Să asculte de ei și să rămână în casa părinților, în felul acesta ei o susțineau pentru a termina o facultate, sau 2. Să plece de acasă și să uite de părinții ei. Ce a ales ea? Opțiunea numărul 3. Să-și omoare părinții și să rămână în casă. Cum? Cu ajutorul iubitului ei. Aceștia au plănuit crima perfectă, perfectă în viziunea lor. Au plătit 10.000 de dolari unor cunoștințe să vină să execute un jaf care a mers prost. Jennifer avea să fie în casă și avea să scape ca prin minune. Jennifer și Daniel au plănuit totul prin mesaje folosind cartele noi. Dar haideți să o luăm ușor, ușor cu începutul. Promit că merită să stați până la sfârșit. Trebuie să te avertizez încă de la început că acest clip te poate afecta emoțional. Nu uita să te abonezi și să lași un comentariu. În caz că nu știai, acest clip a apărut acum ceva timp pe Patreon. Dacă vrei să ai astfel de beneficii sau doar să susții canalul, acesta este locul în care să o faci. Apropo, membrii de pe Patreon au materiale extra pentru fiecare video. Înainte să continui acest clip, ți-aș recomanda să pui pauză și să vizionezi înainte clipul de pe canalul Ana Crime Viral. Aceea este prima parte a acestui caz, așa că vei înțelege mai bine contextul înainte să vezi interogatoriul lui Jennifer. Am pus linkul mai jos. Cum s-au cunoscut Jennifer și Daniel? Ambii făceau parte din formația școlii, iar relația lor s-a consolidat într-o excursie cu formația în Europa. Să ascultăm ce a declarat Jennifer. How did your relationship with Danny develop? Where, where does it go and how long does it last? It lasted about six years. Um, it began in the summer of 2003, before my grade 12 year. Uh, we were just really good friends and I guess it just happened. Like we just started going out. Well, saying that we were going out, but... Um, I didn't really get to see him much. Let's talk about that. Why didn't you get the chance to see him much? 
I wasn't allowed to have a boyfriend. And that was when you were 18? I was 17. And what were the issues your father had with a boyfriend? Was it Danny in particular, or, Dan- or was it just no, a boy? just any boy. Când aceasta a picat un examen și nu a reușit să termine liceul, a falsificat o scrisoare de acceptare la facultatea Rikerson. Și de aici minciunile au început să curgă. And what did you tell him? That I was going to school. For? Uh, for just pre-med, uh, not pre-med, sorry, science. For science. Bachelor of Science. You would have had bills for school. How was is, how is that coming up? How are these bills being paid for for university that you weren't going to? I was working at Eastside Mario's. And I took care of myself. So like he financially, my father was never. He never took hand in bills, so he didn't know anything about bills. Did your mom know that you weren't going to university? No. So both your parents thought you had gone to university. Yes. Okay. And um, how long did that? How long did they still to this point in time think that you had gone to university for for farm for sciences? După ce Daniel a pus-o în legătură cu un asasin care avusese astfel de antecedente, acestea ei s-au cerut 10.000 de dolari pentru ca părinții ei să fie executați. În mod normal ar fi fost 20.000, dar având în vedere că a venit în urma unei recomandări, asasinul i-a oferit un discount de 50%. noiembrie 2010. Trei oameni în armați au intrat cu forța în casa familiei Pan și ceea ce părea un jaf s-a transformat într-un masacru. Aceștia au luat bani de la Jennifer după care i-au legat mâinile la spate. Când au urcat la etaj, i-au găsit pe părinții acesteia. După ce i-au jefuit, i-au împușcat și au fugit. Înainte să fie legată, Jennifer a spus că și-a pus telefonul în buzunarul de la spate. Cu ajutorul acestui telefon, ea a reușit să apeleze 911. Medicii nu au avut cum să o salveze pe mama lui Jennifer. Jennifer, împreună cu tatăl ei, au fost duși la spital. După un control de rutină, medicii au stabilit că Jennifer nu este rănită, așa că a fost dusă la secția de poliție pentru a da o declarație. Suddenly I just heard my mom calling for my dad to come down. And that's when I lowered the volume on my TV and I could hear the voices weren't any voices I was very familiar with. And so I was scared and I couldn't move. I just sat in my room for a while. And then I thought I heard them all let, like leave the top floor and I peered out of my bedroom door. And a guy was there and he came at me and had string in his hands and tied my arms back and said I have a gun behind your back. Do what I say. If you do what I say then no one will get hurt. Where is the money? Show me where your money is. I am um, I have still a few a bit of money put aside from when I was waitressing cash. So I showed him where it was and he took it and put it in his pocket, I think. And then Să nu uităm că una din tehnicile polițiștilor, mai ales în interogările inițiale, este să nu întrerupă deloc interlocutorul. Din contră, atunci când suspectul ia o pauză și se așteaptă să i fie pusă o altă întrebare, Polițiștii tac și îl încurajează să continue doar dând din cap. Oare cum au reușit să intre hoții? The sliding glass door. Is it locked all the time? Occasionally it's forgotten to be locked. But for the most part we do check it before we go to bed. Before everybody, the last person is supposed to check everything before turning in. But on some occasions it's how do you know that it's been unlocked? When my mother goes out to water the plants the next morning, it's open. And she makes a comment about that? She comments to my father that he had forgotten when he went out to water his grass and the night before. What about your front door? How do you what is that when you guys are home or when you guys are home in the house, do you lock your front door or do you keep it or do you keep it all unlocked? Occasionally it's left unlocked. Because the way our family is, we have family that come over after dinner. So sometimes we leave the door unlocked, but it will always be locked before bed. 
The last person going into bed. The last person always locks it. Yes. And you said something about Sorry. activates the alarm as well? Um, we activate the alarm before we go to make a wide X so that I could later loosen if I needed it to, but he had pulled really, really tight, and okay. I guess he felt my flinch, and that's when he quickly tied the second knot, I think. I don't exactly know. All I know is, like, I flinched, and then it got tighter. So you were tied, you were bound behind you? Behind me, yes. Okay. Which then they dragged me down the stairs, and made me kneel at the bottom, telling me to face down on the floor, while the other guy had a gun behind my head, and asked my mom where her purse was. My mom kept trying to get up, and they kept telling her to sit down, and so I didn't want her to get hurt, so I told her mom to sit down. They were trying to find her wallet, but she, her English sinker, so she kept saying first. They kept pushing her down onto the chair. Okay. Take your time. Take your time. All this is very important, so take your time. They kept all the lights off on the main floor. The only time there was light was when they opened the fridge door to see if they could find where my mom's purse was. I didn't... At that point, I saw three figures of men. One with a hoodie. Like, the one I could see the most clearly, he had a hoodie on. And I believe he had a bandana of some sort covering from like his I didn't I don't remember any of his clothing unfortunately the only thing I can remember was him was he had dreadlocks he had dreadlocks so are you, uh, it, can you describe his race to me he was black did it was his head covered was his face covered do you remember anything about that just that his dreadlocks were like kind of like flopping all over the place I couldn't really see his face and they kept the lights dark as much as, as much as possible. How long? How long were the dreadlocks? Was it? Were they? You know, like when you say they're dreadlocks and they were flopping all over his face. It's hard. I, I, don't want to remember a hundred percent. I think some of them were like around his face were a little shorter, mm -hmm. and then in the back there were there were longer ones. Okay. Now his complexion. Um, there's various degrees of of of. Of dark. dark to medium dark to to actually light. Uh, I'd say he was. He I wouldn't say he was the darkest person I've seen, but he was on the darker side. Any facial hair? I'd like to say maybe. Say only what you can think. Sure. Just just say what you what you think. I don't want you to say what you're. But you I don't know. want to say something wrong. Exactly. So you, if you don't know, then I it's okay know. to say. It's okay I'm to not say. Sure. Okay. So, can you give an age approximation for this guy? Well, when the other officer asked me, I was leaning along the ages of twenty-eight to thirty-three. So, an, an, an someone who's established in life. I would assume so. Like not established meaning guess. world, meaning that he's been around, the, been around. So uh, a twenty-year-old talks completely different than a thirty-year-old, as you know. He seemed to be the one in charge. He seemed to be running the show. He's the one that had me. Like he pretty much did not let me go. He was in charge of me, and all the money I showed him, he pocketed. Okay. Did he have a gun? Did you see the gun? I only saw the top part of the gun. What did it look like? Um, kind of, it was black. Yeah. And it kind of, not triangular, but it was slightly wider at the end than it was closer. Do you know the difference between what a pistol and a revolver is? Yes. Okay. Do you know if it was a pistol or a revol revolver? That particular one that he was holding, I believe, should have been a pistol. A pistol. Okay. Because the difference is the, the round part, right? So you tell me what's a pistol and what's a revolver. Which one has okay. the round part? I would think that the revolver has the, the ones that the bullets go around. Okay. And it didn't look like that. It looked like more like a handgun. So it looked more like a pistol? Yes. What you're saying, not a revolver. No. 
<laughs> so they took me, because I was next to the stairwell, they took me up the stairs to sh show them where my father's wallet was, but I'm, I didn't know. They had turned the room upside down. I didn't know where his pants were at that time. And then after they had gotten that, they had taken me and they tied me to the top of the banister. Just with one string, I could still move. But I was afraid to because the one guy just had that gun. They had, like, something blind me. Like, they, number one, once when we first got in the room, the light was on. And he's like, hold on. And he grabbed, I don't remember what he grabbed, jacket or sleeve or something. And he kind of, like, shell shielded me with it. And that's when he took my glasses and he, like, tossed them. So he took your glasses off? Okay. How did you get your glasses back? I asked the officer. Okay. So you're now tied to the banister? Yep. He calls for Cuzzy. So He's like, get Cuzzy to give me that string I just gave him. And who is he talking to? Number two. So he says to number two, tell Cuzzy to get me that string. Deci în punctul acesta, Jennifer este legată de scări. Mama lui Jennifer avea o sumă de 10.000 de dolari pe care o economisise și o ținea noptiera de lângă pat. I think I heard my parents going down the stairs and my mom was asking them for me to come with them. They wouldn't let me come with them. And after they said, the last thing I heard them say was, you lied, you lied to us, you lied to us. And then I heard two pops. My mom screamed. I yelled out for her. And a couple more pops. Take your time. Take your time. And I think I heard my mom say, or moan or something and then they did one more before they left and then one of the guys said we have to go now it's been too long and then they ran out the door and I think once they were out the door I heard my dad go up the stairs and at that point I had my phone in my po in my on me behind me that I had hidden there that they didn't know about so when I when I When they, when I thought that they had heard them all leave and my dad ran up the stairs, I whipped up the phone and I called 911. But I, I still hadn't heard anything from my mom and all I could hear was my dad running on the street. Ați observat cum aceasta se fâstăcește și ezită atunci când explică polițistului cum a sunat la 911 cu mâinile legate la spate? Se uită la el pentru a obține o confirmare. Haideți să mai vedem o dată. I heard my dad go up the stairs and at that point I had my phone in my po in my on me behind me that I had hidden there that they didn't know about. Polițistul îi cere permisiunea pentru a-i fi verificat telefonul, iar dacă la început Jennifer ezita, acesta îl dă. După doar două ore Jennifer părsește secția poliției. Cum vi s-a părut până aici? Spune adevărul? Câteva chestii dacă totul a părut normal până acum. Șervețelele pe care le-a folosit să șteargă lacrimile erau uscate. Asta au remarcat polițiștii după ce aceasta a plecat. Cine se comportă în felul acesta după ce a trecut prin așa ceva? Mama ta tocmai a fost ucisă, tatăl tău este pe patul de spital în comă, iar tu ești complet lucid și îți expui ideile coerent? Plus că... Și ne omoară doi oameni cu sânge rece și pe al treilea doar leagă de scar. Dacă au venit să fure, de ce nu au încercat să spargă seiful, care era complet vizibil în dormitorul părinților? Normal că și polițiștii au avut aceste întrebări și după ce și-au făcut temele în legătură cu Jennifer și știau câteva lucruri despre ea, au chemat-o din nou la secție. În acest interogatoriu, polițiștii vor încerca să vadă dacă Jennifer a mințit prima dată când le-a spus cum s-a petrecut totul. Why are you let's why are you why are you nervous? Tell me about why you're nervous. Because I don't want to say the wrong things. Oh, you, so Because that you, day was a lot. You're right. And I've been 
scattered and so bits and pieces are here and some pieces aren't here and I'm just so I want you to sit back in your chair okay just sit back in your chair take a deep breath okay close your eyes just follow my line just sit back in the chair for a second sit back relax it's the best you can close your eyes and just breathe for a minute okay We're not in any type of danger. We're nowhere. We're in a very safe place. Okay? And we're going to work through this. And don't worry about what you forget or what you mix up or whatever you're doing. Is You start and pl push the play button for that day. And if you stick to everything that you remember happening that day, it will come out in sequence. Okay, and I'm going to show you a technique after we go through this that will sh that will show it to you. Okay, so let's just start. You've taken a deep breath. You've relaxed. You're in a good position right there. Let's start from the beginning of the day when you wake up, and let's start moving forward from there. După cum vedeți, aici Jennifer pare îngrijorată. Nu știm dacă este tristă pentru că a suferit o pierdere completă sau pentru că are emoții, deoarece a fost chemată din nou de polițiști la interogatoriu. În continuare, Jennifer povestește cum a decurs acea zi. În acea seară, mama ei venise de la muncă, iar Jennifer a coborât din camera ei să o salute. Când a urcat înapoi, observase că tatăl ei era deja în dormitorul părinților. La puțin timp după, în timp ce aceasta vorbea la telefon cu Edward, un coleg de muncă, Jennifer a auzit-o pe mama ei cum îl striga pe tatăl acesteia, după care a auzit voci pe care nu le cunoștea. Sunday! So, what does that translate to? Uh, that's my father's name, Han. Uh, come down here. Does she say anything else associated with that? With that? I can't hear clearly because, like, I was on the phone and the TV was on. Sure. But that's what I heard. Is she yelling, or is it um, at normal? It's a loud. It's a. She's not yelling, but it's a loud tone. Okay. And normally, that tone means that I need to go down and see what's happening. Usually. So that's when I told him, I told Edward, I was like, okay, I gotta go. I'll call you later. And I hang up the phone with him. Have you heard anything else at this point in time? As I'm hanging up the phone with him, I hear footsteps going up the stairs. Este ciudat, dar și fascinant în același timp cum Jennifer reușește să arate emoții în unele momente și zero emoții în alte momente. Cred că toată lumea este de acord că nu ai cum să-ți controlezi emoțiile atât de bine atunci când vine vorba de astfel de evenimente. Haide să mai vedem o dată. Sunday. And what does that translate to? Uh, that's my father's name, Han. Uh, come down here. În continuare, Jennifer ne spune ce se întâmplă când aceasta a luat contact cu agresorii. Stand up. So he could tie my hands together. And I was trying to make it loose so I could I could do something. But he had pulled him so tight. And he made sure I squealed before he, before he let go. So you've squealed, they're tight, and they're behind your back. And that's when he grabs me and starts leading me down the stairs. Okay. Does he pat you down or search you or do anything? Thank goodness, no. Because if he had pat me down, he would have found my phone. Okay. The stairs are a little curved, and we just went, he sat, he made me, pushed me down by my shoulders and told me to sit on the floor. Do you feel the gun? Is he using his hand? He's using his hand to lead me down the stairs and force me to sit down. Uh, only one hand. Okay. When okay. you say you're on the floor, how are you on the floor? How are you? What are you? How, what's your position? Are you lying on the floor? Are you sitting on the floor? I'm sitting on the floor, cross-legged. La interviul inițial, aceasta spune că după ce a fost legată la mâini, a fost dusă jos și a stat în genunchi. Acum spune că stă pe burtă cu picioarele încrucișate. Genul acesta de hibe sunt căutate de polițiști. Nu îi ajută neapărat foarte mult pentru că nu reprezintă nicio dovadă, dar sunt confirmări ale faptului că sunt pe drumul cel bun. A gun pointed at my father asking him if he had money in his wallet. 
and where the money was in the house. And he asked my father how much he had in his wallet. And my father answered him, $60. And he kept yelling, you better not be lying to me. Is there more? Where is the rest? And another person who was hiding behind the wall in the kitchen from where I stood, I couldn't see him at first. He had was asking my mother where her purse was because they keep uttering, if you cooperate, no one will get hurt. Vom observa în nenumărate rânduri că uneori Jennifer ridică privirea și așteaptă confirmarea polițistului. Este foarte important pentru ea ca polițistul să creadă că acestea au fost vorbele celor care au intrat în casă. Până la urmă, ea de asta este în viață, pentru că au cooperat. Because they keep uttering, if you cooperate, no one will get hurt. And... She keeps asking herself, where's my purse? Where's my purse? In English. And then I believe she remembers that she didn't take a purse out. She only had a wallet that day. After she came home, she had a wallet. She was trying to find it. And number two was looking around for it. Was she up helping to look for it? That the second time, that's when she st- stood up to help, and that's when she got pushed back down. Okay. Are they bound? Do you see their hands, or? My mother, when she got up, I she was not bound. Okay. Did did you see them recover anything inside your mom and dad's room? I did not see anything. No. Are you sure? Because uh, we would, when we spoke the last time, there was some mention of some other money that went missing. There, uh, yes, the U.S. currency. So how did that get found? I believe when they were looking for my father's wallet, they had opened the drawer, and there was a, it was in an envelope. What drawer would that have been in? On my, on the, if you're in, at the door where I was standing, on the left side, the bedside table. Whose side of the bed is it? That's my mother's side of the bed. Okay. And approximately how much money? I'm not sure how much she took out for our our trip, but I can o- I can only estimate about a few hundred dollars. Few hundred, because at the time, the last time Or you told me, you were pretty adamant 1, about about eleven hundred dollars. So I'm curious to know how you came up with that number. I believe because when we were at the border, we and we stopped at the duty free. My mother was deciding whether to use her U.S. currency or her uh, her U.S. currency or her Canadian currency. So it was at that time you remember hearing eleven hundred dollars, and that's what is that the inference you're saying is that because you're pretty solid saying that it was eleven hundred dollars that went missing that was was taken, and that you saw it when we spoke. And who took it? Who took possession of the money? Abia acum vedem panica autentică din ochii ei, pentru că realizează că încet, încet se încurcă în minciuni. Spune adevărul și atunci nu va trebui să mai ții minte nimic, spune Mark Twain. Normal că polițistul ar putea să clarifice asta, dar nu-l interesează acest lucru. Cu cât mai multe inconsistențe, cu atât mai bine la proces. Cu cât devii mai emoționat, cu atât ai mintea mai înceață, iar gândurile nu sunt în ordine. Pentru acest interogatoriu, poliția din Markham a folosit un detectiv cu mult mai multă experiență. Acesta știe exact când să tacă și să o lase pe Jennifer să povestească sau când să pună presiune. Did you ever make it past the threshold of that door? At this point, he throws my glasses. 
Then he walks down the stairs. So he's still up there with you. When do you, and, and at this, so you've had your glasses on the whole time. When does he take them off? Right before he leaves. Right after, so you're, you're tied to the banister. You're just before he leaves to go down the stairs, your glasses are off. You... Deci în punctul acesta ea este legată la mâini, legată de balustradă. Unul dintre atacatori spune că deja au pierdut mult timp și duc pe părinți la parter unde îi împușcă. După ce aceștia au plecat, Jennifer apelează 911. O întrebare logică pe care polițiștii și-au pus-o a fost cum? Cum ai sunat la 911 dacă aveai mâinile legate? Înainte să fie legată, acesta și-a ascuns telefonul în buzunarul de la spate. Polițistul îi cere să exemplifice cum a putut suna la 911. Can you show me? Can you stand up and turn around and tell me? Just show on the camera how your hands are bound and how you are against the railing. You don't have to sit down. I just need to see how you were. The only reason that I'm trying to, I need to do this, is that I'm also going to ask you, is that it, so take this back to, from, take it out of a traumatizing event, which it is, and put, put yourself into a more clinical position, because I want to see how you could physically get your phone out of your waistband. We're obviously going to need to know that. It's very important. So traumatize a wide way. Now put yourself into a, just a state of, I need to man- mechanically show how I can get access to my phone. Okay, because that's obviously very relevant. I, we know you made the phone call, but questions are going to obviously raise is that if my hands are bound and I'm against the railing, how do I talk to a 911 operator? Okay, so clinically, this is now a clinical demonstration. Just stand up, focus in on how you did it. And I want you to stick that in your waistband as an example. Okay, so take your just take your sweat off because this will be a very smooth, very quick thing. It's a one-time demonstration. I'm not going to ask you to repeat it, but I need to go through it. Okay, so just take your sweater off. And this is the arm that's the, the strings wrapped around against the banister. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now how can you get to the phone? And how do you make the phone call? 911. Mm-hmm. And do you talk down like that? Yes, I'm yelling at the phone like this. And how can you hear? I turn the volume on max. Yes. So that's exactly the way that you're talking to her against the railing. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's good enough. Sit down. Okay, no zic este impossible. După această explicație, polițistul părăsește camera interogatoriului. Probabil se așteptau ca Jennifer să nu aibă cum să le demonstreze cum a sunat la 911. Între timp, Jennifer vorbește cu un alt agent de poliție. I don't I don't want to say something wrong or like just because I think I'm overthinking everything and it's just that you know. I don't think you can I mean, the truth is the truth, right? It's not, you know, it's not going to be wrong. No. Okay, it's, it's, it is it is what it is. And, um... No, just, like, with the details and everything. Like, it's just... I want to get it right so, like, everything could be... Everything could be right. But it's just, like, it's pieces and... Yeah, but, I mean, but, you know, you know all the pieces are going to... They're, they're all going to come together and you're... It, da, așa este. Dacă spui adevărul, pot sta liniștit. Adevărul mereu iese la iveală. În mod normal, această afirmație ar trebui să te liniștească. Asta dacă nu ascunzi adevărul. Când detectivul se întoarce, are o singură întrebare. You're upstairs and they're downstairs. No. Right? So it's a natural concern when why would they leave you alone why would they not do the same to you you can't answer that question the only thing i can say is he said i cooperated the, but i asked him to take me the number What's one guy on? the number one guy said you cooperated okay 
there's no, you had no threats. And again, we're back to the fact that you admittedly lied. Okay, not to me, right? No. Not to me. No. You admittedly lied. You've lied to your parents, right, about going to school. You've lied to, to Danny about being, Daniel about being raped and about receiving a bullet. Who's to say this whole thing isn't a lie? That what you're telling me is a lie. Because if you are lying, it's the most cold-blooded thing that I have ever faced in my life. Who's to say this whole thing isn't a lie? Who's to say this whole thing isn't a lie? Ei bine, pe 12 noiembrie 2010, tatăl lui Jennifer se trezește din comă și are o poveste puțin diferită de cea a lui Jen. Și prin puțin vreau să spun complet. Le povestește detectivilor cum trei oameni au intrat în casă, erau de culoare într-adevăr, dar nu arătau precum i-a descris Jennifer. Acesta a mai spus că fica lor nu fusese legată pentru nicio secundă și că se plimba liberă prin casă și vorbea cu agresorii. Tatălui Jennifer considera că fica lui este principala vinovată pentru aceste fapte. Jennifer a fost chemată pentru a treia oară la interogatoriu, dar acum ca și suspect principal. Aici intervievatorul aplică tehnica RAID. Această tehnică presupune că polițistul să acuze direct de anumite fapte, iar suspectul să explice de ce nu este vinovat de acele fapte. Până acum, ca și dovezi, aveau declarația tatălui ei, dar nu era de ajuns. Luând în considerare starea acestuia, declarația lui era ușor de atacat în instanță. Așa că polițistul va încerca să pună presiune pe Jennifer pentru a obține o mărturisire. Why I'm here today, okay, is that I'm an expert, okay, in what we call truth verification. Okay, I'm not a homicide detective. Okay, although I work on a lot of homicides. Okay? So, my job in any case and anybody that the witness in this case, I have to speak to. Okay, after they've been interviewed originally by anybody else. Okay, and so what it's about is truth verification. Okay, so basically all my studies come into interviewing and uh, detecting deception, uh, determine if somebody's telling the police the truth. Okay, because every investigation that we run that's a homicide, we run a parallel investigation. Okay. And when I talk about a parallel investigation, what I mean by that is obviously the detectives that are assigned to the case, okay, are trying to determine who's responsible for the home invasion, who's responsible uh, for what happened there, okay? That's their job, okay? My job is to determine whether everything somebody has told us as a witness or as a reporting party is actually the truth. So how... Do I make my conclusions? Okay. So some of the ways is obviously I count on my experience, right? I talk to thousands of people. Okay. And I basically know when somebody's not being straightforward with me. Okay. I can tell by the language they use, how they answer the question, their body language, how they treat the question, that something's wrong here. Okay. This doesn't make sense. The other thing is something, an understanding of what common sense is, okay? Could this have happened that way? By what the person is telling me, could have it even happened like that, okay? Is it realistic? Is it plausible, okay? So, basically, we're trained in statement analysis, okay? And these days, we even have software that assists us in that, okay? We're in the modern ages, right? Okay, so we have p- uh, computer programs, And one of the ones that we utilize in these cases is an analysis program called Event Probability Analysis, okay? And what we do is we feed everything into the computer. Basically, the computer, I type it out, and we feed it in, and it takes, you scan it in, actually, and it takes a copy of everything that's been said. And it analyzes uh, what a person has said, okay? And based on what they say, It will tell us where the areas of deception are, okay, when something's missing uh, that they're not telling us, okay, areas of concern, and uh, areas that are flat out not truthful, okay, 
and areas that they can, you come back with a result that says not plausible. Okay, because what it is is this software analyzes it's being entered by all police forces. Okay, so it has data from thousands of cases, right? So if it gets information that's totally never happened before in any other case, right? That tells you something, right? Because human beings, there's only so many ways to do something, okay? And people follow patterns, okay? And when things go outside of a normal pattern, that's a red flag, right? Do you agree? To reach out to what we call modern technology, okay? So there's some of the things that we utilize as satellite, okay? Now, are you, do you know what satellite can do? Okay, do you watch any of these uh, when... Uh, these war programs on TV where they do bombings and stuff. Have you ever seen any of that? Or when uh, the Iraq war was on, you ever see any of the news clips where you can see the satellite honing in on buildings? Okay. So we can go back and obtain satellite information. Okay. And essentially the satellite's a 24-hour video that's going on, uh, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right? It's recording information, okay? And that's how the military uses it in, you know, for precision bombing and everything else because they're able to find out where bombs are inside buildings and hone in on that through satellites and heat-seeking uh, uh, apparatuses that tell you what's going on inside, right? Okay? So we're able to go back uh, and review that, okay? And so we would have to obtain... Uh, that data for a specific address, uh, get it for the dates and time that we're concerned with, okay? And basically, if people are moving around in a house, um, it's like an x-ray, okay? And basically, we're able to tell, you know, are those movements, are those actions, that number of people consistent with the story that we've been told? Um, are the people in the positions that the witnesses are telling us they were in, uh, or are they different? Okay, and if they're different, why are they different is what, what our question becomes, right? Deci, adaugă date în calculator și pe baza incidentelor precedente știu dacă o faptă este posibilă sau nu? Obțin date prin satelit, sateliți folosiți în război pentru a vedea câte persoane sunt în casă? <laughs> dacă privesc obiectiv, normal că nu cred ce spune polițistul. Dar cred că dacă eram în camera aceea, după ce mai fusesem de două ori și simțeam emoțiile pe care Jennifer le simte acum, îl credeam. Normal că poliția nu are acces la așa ceva și polițistul minte, însă legea le permite polițiștilor să mintă în anumite situații pentru a obține adevărul de la suspect. Bineînțeles că Jennifer nu știe asta. One of the things you have to remember is that your dad was there. Okay? And your dad had a front row seat to all of this. Okay? And your dad's a very smart man. Okay? And he has a very clear perception of what's going on. And he tells a very truthful story, because I've gone through this whole process with him. Okay, I've had to do the same thing. And I know he's being truthful. Okay? The problem is that your story, what you're telling, is not truthful. Okay? And we have to clear this up. You let them in the house. You let them in. We know that. You went downstairs and you opened that door for them. We know that. Ken, you did leave the door open for them, didn't you? Pardon? Yes. Yes. And that's why you went downstairs earlier in the night, right? After your mom got home, what did you do? Went down and said hello. Pretended to check the door. And was it locked? No. You made sure it was unlocked. Bineînțeles că aceasta a recunoscut. Doar că i-a lăsat să intre în casă. A mai spus că de fapt ea era ținta și că i-a îngășase să fie omorâtă pentru că nu mai suporta viața pe care o ducea în casa părinților. La finalul acestui interogatoriu, Jennifer a fost arestată și acuzată de conspirația de comite o crimă, tentativă de omor și crimă. Cei trei agresori împreună cu iubitul lui Jennifer au fost arestați și acuzați de acele fapte. Polițiștii au găsit toate mesajele dintre Jennifer și Daniel. 
inclusiv pe cele trimise cu câteva ore înainte de crimă. Un proces care a durat 10 luni, în care au fost aduși 50 de martori, în care Jennifer a fost chemată ca martor timp de 7 zile. Toți cinci au primit două sentințe de închisoare pe viață, cu posibilitatea de eliberare condiționată după 25 de ani. Când Jennifer va ieși din închisoare, aceasta va avea 49 de ani. Pentru sănătatea dumneavoastră, evitați excesul de control asupra copiilor. În caz contrar, apelați psihologul înaintea medicului și farmacistului. Cam atât pentru astăzi. Spunem te rog, în comentarii cum ți s-a părut această orchestrare odioasă pe care a făcut-o Jennifer. Nu uita să te abonezi, să lași un like și să trimiți clipul ăsta și prietenilor. Dacă vrei să devii fanul oficial al canalului, ai aici linkul de Patreon unde te poți abona și unde poți primi extra conținut. Zi faină!